Imagine a frigid giant 7 to 17 times the mass of Earth lurking 500 to 700 astronomical units from the Sun. For nearly a century, it's taunted us drifting less than half a degree per year. Far too dim for optical telescopes, but too far infrared surveys taken exactly 23 years apart just captured a tiny shift that cries out, I am real. Today, I'll walk you through what Terry Long and collaborators found and why it could be the long sought Planet 9 and what the next observing season might reveal. Well, the obvious question is why Planet 9 even matters. Back in 2016, Batigan and Brown noticed an eerie pattern. A handful of distant Kuiper Belt objects share nearly the same orbital orientation. Statistically, that's a 0.2% fluke unless something massive is shepherding them. Simulations point out to an ice giant, maybe 10 arc masses, circling the sun about 700 AU out. An orbit so huge usually takes thousands of years to complete. So due to its conditions, this planet is incredibly hard and very dim to observe in optical light. Therefore, we usually use infrared light. At that distance, sunlight hitting the planet is 10,000 times weaker than what Earth receives. Reflected light fades with fourth power of distance, d to the minus 4, but the planet's own heat only dims as d to the minus 2. In simple word, invisible light, it's nearly invisible, yet in the far infrared, around 60 to 100 microns, it still glows like a faint amber. It's just that it's too dim for our own eyes to perceive it. Coming to this paper, in 1983, the IRA satellite scanned the whole sky at 12, 25, 60, and 100 microns, detecting sources down to 0.2 Janskys at 60 micron in its faint source catalog. Fast forward to 2006, Japan's Akari telescope repeated that feat with even sharper sensitivity and logged nearly a million faint blips in a spectral list called MUSL, the monthly unconfirmed source list. Here's the genius move. If Planet 9 creeps only about 2 arc minutes per year, a 23-year gap means it should have slid through 42 to 70 arc minutes, just the separation that fans been calculated. That's far enough to spot, yet slow enough not to be confused with comets. So, after filtering 956,000 Akari sources and 173,000 IRAS detections, the team whittled everything down to 13 maybe planets. Image by image, the rejected 12. Galactic dust there, mistaken artifact there, until one lonely pair remain. This survivor checks every box. Its iris flux is about 80 microns and quite strong enough. Its Akari flux is 90 microns, still pokes above the 0.21 Jansky threshold. And most crucially, the two positions are about 50 arc minutes apart, bang, in the predicted range for an object 500 to 700 AV away. From that distance and brightness, you infer a mass of roughly 7 to 17 arc masses and a surface temperature nearly 45 Kelvin. That is minus 223 degrees Celsius, yet still warm enough to glow in the infrared. Let me unpack the physics without kind of blowing your brain. First, the black body flux law. The brightness that we measure, S lambda, or spectral flux. Spectral flux density we receive at Earth at a particular wavelength lambda. Think of it as how bright an object looks at our detectors per unit wavelength. The units is usually in watts per square meter per micron. This S lambda equals the planet's intrinsic radiance, L lambda, times a tiny solid angle omega. It subtends from Earth. Again, L lambda is spectral radiance at a particular wavelength lambda. The intrinsic brightness the planet emits at that wavelength per unit area per unit solid angle. 
It's what you'd measure if you were right next to a planet looking at one square meter of its surface. Again, the units are watts per square meter per steridian per micron. Cooler objects peak at longer wavelengths, which is why our candidate shines at about 100 microns, exactly where Iris and Akari were most sensitive. Next, let's look at the orbit geometry. Take a semi-major axis of 700 AU and add an eccentricity of 0.6 that stretches the orbit from 280 AU at perihelion to 1120 AU at aphelion. Finally, looking at the detection logic, Akari and MUSL keeps sources that show up in multiple scans within the same day but vanish six months later. That's a perfect filter for something that slides a few arc minutes per year, yet it isn't a static galaxy. To prove that this isn't a cosmic red herring, we need fresh images. The DECAM imager on Chile's Blanco telescope can hit 26th magnitude in about an hour. Nine such detections let you knock down a preliminary orbit. Beyond that, the upcoming Vera Rubin Observatory will scan the sky nightly, stacking exposures which is deep enough to catch even this distant amber. But we're not just there yet. A tiny cosmic timeout. Father's Day is almost here. If your dad sparked your stargazing habits, surprise him with a personalized star chart at givethestars.com. I've set up a discount promo. You could also get an instant digital download at high resolution. Own your moment now, back to the hunt. Looking at the bigger picture, if confirmed Planet 9 can rewrite our cosmic history, was it flung outward by Jupiter in solar system's chaotic food? Or was it captured as an interstellar drifter adopted by the sun's gravity? So did we finally see Planet 9? Or did we just chase a cosmic noise? Within months, we'll aim DE cam, parse the pixels, and know for sure. I'll be right here waiting for that news to come out. And we'll give you an explanation as soon as that comes up. Until then, keep looking up, keep your minds open, and remember, the universe still hides the giants in plain sight if you are patient enough to watch them crawl out. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Till then, I will catch you guys in the next one really soon.